Wellness for Life is brought to you by Purim Physical Therapy, Sanford Health Clinic and Same Day Surgery Center, Purim Area Community Center, Amy Lundberg Fitness for the Soul, Gottenborg Chiropractic Clinic, Pelican Drug Health Mart, Mojave Ottawa Community Action Partnership. Hi, I'm Michelle and I'm here with David Gottenborg of Gottenborg Chiropractic Clinic. Today we're going to talk about arch supports and how they can benefit you. Yeah, thanks. You know, the reason why I want to talk about arch supports today is because I think most people assume when you wear arch supports, you're talking about foot or ankle pain. But I want you to think a little bit about how it interacts with your knee, hip, and perhaps even the low back. So we have a little short video here uh, that we'd like to watch to start the program. When a foot pronates excessively, the foot flattens and the toes turn outward more than normal. The kneecap rotates inward and the pelvis and shoulders shift to compensate for the excessive pronation, causing unnecessary postural stress. Spinal pelvic stabilizers help to provide a balanced symmetrical foundation by preventing excessive pronation. Feet no longer flare excessively. The knees, pelvis, and shoulders then return to their normal positions, helping provide proper postural alignment. So when I'm watching TV on the weekends, I notice these infomercials um, talking about the different kinds of arch supports. So what makes yours unique? The, I think what you're seeing on infomercials, and they give us, I think, really usable information, but they're correcting a single arch. And what we really recognize is that there are three distinct arches in the foot. The instep, a lateral, and a medial arch across the forefoot. And as you can probably see on this picture, we also take into consideration the alignment of the heel bone or the Achilles tendon. We want it straight, not curved as in this picture. Not to mention another thing we look for, a thing that you can look for is when standing, do your toes splay? That's very, very common when the arch across the forefoot collapses. Oh, I guess I didn't even realize that we had more than one arch in our feet. Yeah, we do, and uh, for example, um, this would probably be a lot of, look a lot like what you would get if you ordered something over the TV set. And you can see here it supports the inside arch. Um, when we take a casting or a profile of the foot, we're also correcting the arch over the forefoot, as in this example. And in some instances, we're using um, another addition to the arch support that may correct um, the heel alignment. And further yet, we sometimes will add a heel lift. And this is what makes a custom support differently. All three components are added to the support. So where do you go from here? How would you proceed in getting an arch support? Uh, it's really simple. Um, we do it a couple different ways. Um, uh, one of the more conventional ways is to use a, uh, an impressionable foam. You can see here we would have the person stand uh, and get an impression of their foot. And then we also use um, a device that digitally images the bottom of the foot. And from that digital impression, we can build an orthotic. Again, that not just meets the instep, but s supports all three arches. Thank you, David, for all the great information today. And I would suggest that anybody that has having foot issues would stop and see David and see what he can do for you. Coming up on Wellness for Life. Hi, I'm Don Perrin and this is Jenny Field. We're pharmacists at Pelican Drug Health Mart in Pelican Rapids, Minnesota. Today we're going to talk about understanding asthma inhalers. Did you know that only 7% of the people that use inhalers understand how to use them correctly? And you combine that with a wide choice of asthma medications, asthma management can be more than a little confusing. Together we can change that. Everybody is different. So your doctor decides what type of medication and inhaler is best for you. But here's a brief overview of what you need to know. There are 
many different types of inhaled medications. They usually use inhaled medications for asthma treatment because it can eliminate some of the side effects seen with oral medications or with injectable medications. There's typically two general types of inhaled medications. Um, the first one is what they term like the rescue inhalers. Those ones are used when you're having shortness of breath or coughing or gasping and they work really quickly. And then there's another type of medication that you use daily whether you have symptoms or not and those are um, long-term controller medications. Types of asthma inhalers. Uh, asthma inhalers are handheld devices that deliver medication directly into your lungs. A meter dose inhaler has a boot-shaped mouthpiece and a pressurized canister containing medication. Typically, you release the medication by pushing the canister into the boot. Some of these inhalers contain counters that tell you how many doses remain. If not, you should track the number of doses you've used. Some meter dose inhalers contain a spacer. This temporarily holds medication until it is released, which makes it easier to receive a full dose with a slow breath. Some spacers are built in, others attached separately to the inhaler. Infants and children may require a face mask to ensure right dose reaches the lungs. Dry inhalers release medication when you breathe a deep, fast breath. Using air or oxygen under pressure uh, is how nebulizers work. They deliver a fine mist of medication through a tube or a mask. The misuse of inhalers can be a, a real challenge for people. They all work differently and um, technique is, is critical to getting the appropriate amount of medication into the lungs. Yeah, missing a step or improper use can lead to too much or too little um, medication into your lungs. Uh, the biggest step that people miss is typically um, with your metered dose inhalers, forgetting to breathe out before you press the canister because you can't breathe it in if your lungs are already full. So that's the number one tip I would give you. Studies have found that most people's memories fade, so you may need a refresher course and that's totally okay. Feel free to come on in and we'll go through how to use your inhaler, how to get the most out of it because that's really important and when you get the most out of in your inhaler, that's when you're going to feel the best. Thank you for watching Wellness for Life, brought to you by Purim Physical Therapy, Sanford Health Clinic and Same Day Surgery Center, Purim Area Community Center, Amy Lundberg, Fitness for the Soul, Gottenborg Chiropractic Clinic, Pelican Drug Health Mart, Mojave Ottawa Community Action Partnership.